Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we're gonna talk about a couple of very interesting topics. The first one will be about Nick Walker. So as you guys know, Nick Walker is out of the Mr. Olympia once again, just like last year. Last year it was due to an injury, and this year it's simply him being burnt out, I guess. Mentally, physically, his body is not responding. I'm also hearing that his blood work is a, is a mess, it's horrible. Uh, which kind of means that the reason why he burnt out is because he abused the gear for way too long, I, I guess. I think it's a pretty safe assumption. Now, we can also talk about whether Matt Jensen is the right coach for Nick Walker. Uh, you guys know that those guys parted their ways for one year and then Nick came back to Matt. And Matt spoke many, many times about how Nick is a better person now, how he mended his relationships, this and that. So yeah, I'm pretty sure Nick Walker is not going any anywhere away from Matt Jensen again. If he did, that would probably mean that he's a bad person again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what we can talk about in this video is what would happen if Nick Walker, you know, endured and just kept pushing and actually ended up on that Mr. Olympia stage. Now, if you look at him uh, here, you know, he doesn't look like he's even close to being in contest condition. Now, I don't know when he decided to give up and stop dieting, but I'm pretty sure if he really tried, if he pushed, if he just went through whatever was happening, if he just didn't give up, he would still probably get in decent condition. And I'm imagining he would probably bring something similar to what he brought to the New York Pro stage. Which most certainly wasn't Nick Walker at his absolute best. His conditioning wasn't horrible, but like it wasn't 100%. It was like 90-95%. But what was worse here was the midsection control. Really, that was the bigger issue. So if he kept going, if he kept pushing, if he wasn't really paying too much attention on how he feels and that his body is not doing, uh, getting the job done easily, if he just, you know, pushed through, I think he would have probably ended up in this kind of condition and at the New York Pro, he was sort of punished for not being at his A game and uh, if he showed up exactly the same at the Mr. Olympia, I think he would still, you know, get a nod from the judges against guys like Martin Fitzwater, maybe Brandon Curry, Hunter Labrada and the others. I think he would have still ended up in that top five. Now, people are kind of separated on this uh, issue. Some people are saying that it's a good decision for him to quit, to give up because his body is having trouble because his career is basically at, at the beginning. I mean, he's still a very young guy. He's only 30 now. He still has another 5, 6, 10, maybe even more than 10 years. So he shouldn't risk anything, you know, sacrifice his health and that kind of stuff and just wait for the next year when everything is just uh, much better for him and compete next year because he still has a lot more years of his career and if he does something crazy his career can end and maybe even his life i mean i don't want to talk about that but you know lately you guys saw how many bodybuilders uh, dropped dead and you know nick is definitely one of the guys who are, who are pushing crazy weight all the time who are, he's definitely he, he's the biggest guy in bodybuilding today pound for pound so in a long term this is the right decision and i personally agree with that there is no reason to rush things to push through if your body is just not willing to get this done easily without uh, stressing too much and without uh, destroying itself basically in the process and then there are the other people who are saying that uh, nick is a quitter that he should just push through that uh, he's uh, that they're calling him a nick talker that he's you know skipping the second year second mr olympia in a row and uh, we are all having expectations and he's just not willing to push through some people are even assuming that he's cheating on his diet and that's why he's not getting in shape i completely disagree with that i understand that point of view but definitely not the way i see it i think uh, nick made the right decision by doing this i'm sure it was super difficult but in the end, I think it was the right decision and uh, I think it's going to pay off next year. So this year, if he showed up and if he was the same as he was at the New York Pro, 
he would have probably been fifth. I don't think he would have placed lower than that. But even though that's a great result, he just wants to win the Mr. Olympia or at least place, you know, in that top three like he did the, the last time he competed at the Mr. Olympia. Not go low, not go down in places. So I understand him. I get the situation. I think he made the right decision, the right call. What do you guys think? All right, now with Nick Walker out of the Mr. Olympia, you know, all the names are going to go one spot up. So one name is going to crack the top 10, even though you or I did not have them in our top 10. But it also means that uh, somebody is going to be in the top 5 that we didn't expect this year. And that very well might be this guy right here, Rafael Brandau, who is really not showing much of his physique, but from what we saw so far, it seems like he is bringing something insane this year. I mean, take a look at this photo. He posted this on his story, and I don't think he uploaded this, 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 this actual photo yet, but here you can see quite clearly what he's looking like and you know it seems like his hardness his conditioning is basically on point at four days out and since he's working with neil hill and neil hill is kind of big on on the, on the peak week i'm pretty sure he's going to get even better on the mr olympia stage on that day so at four days out this is what he looks like and again conditioning he definitely brought it like he definitely changed super super fast in the last couple of weeks but what is more important is that it seems like he brought up his size even more. You know, since the Arnold Classic Brazil until now. I think he is just wider, bigger, rounder, freakier. I think his legs are looking super massive right now. His shoulders are popping out like crazy. Chest thickness is improved. And just compare the size of his body to his head. Right? So it seems like he is going to be a massive guy. Now, we know that he is not as good from the back as he is from the front, but based on what, what Tyler Mannion said, he has no weak poses, meaning even his back double and his back clasped are good poses for Rafael Brandau. And I don't think his back is weak. It's just maybe not super crazy, super impressive, but it's not weak. From the front, he is amazing with that super small waist and crazy aesthetics, like small waist, broad shoulders, flaring quads, perfect symmetry, perfect shape, like super, super genetically blessed guy. And it's not like from the side, he's lacking a lot of thickness, like he is also very thick from the side. Back, again, it can be better, but it's not horrible, like uh, he doesn't have any weak poses, he's very complete, not monstrous, not freaky per se, but complete, overall, tall, big, and it seems like he's bringing conditioning, and like with that shape, with those aesthetics, man, I can definitely see this guy cracking that, uh, th that top five, I mean, it can be either Hunter Labrada, Brandon Curry, Martin Fitzwater, or Rafael Brandau, but I mean, I think I'm gonna change my prediction video, honestly, because and now Nick Walker is out, and uh, now also Andrew Jack is having some trouble with that trapped air or whatever it is, and now with uh, seeing how uh, Rafael Brandau is looking at four days out, oof, I think I'm gonna change my prediction. Also, with seeing Hardy Chopin, the way he is looking and seeing Derek Lansford's legs. I think I kind of am changing my mind slowly, but we'll see. I mean, I should make a video like tomorrow or the day after because Mr. Olympus is only in a couple of days. And uh, I'm telling you guys, Rafael Brandau can for sure be top five. What do you think? And finally, we got a new physique update from John Jewett, who is looking absolutely monstrous. Man, like, take a look at this guy. Like, he is peeled. But it's not just the conditioning, it's just the, the, the thickness that he has, the density of the muscle. Like, I mean, he is bringing a freak factor for sure. He is no, nowhere near Rafael Brandau when it comes to aesthetics, but, you know, in terms of uh, conditioning and, like, density, pff, I mean, yeah, is he gonna be top 10? That's the question. I did not have him in my top 10. I had uh, Akin Williams in 10th. And I was, uh, you know, considering William Bonek for that 10th position as well. So now that Nick is out, I think I'm going to have William Bonek in that 10th and, you know, John Jewett potentially in 11th. But then there's guys like Mohamed Fouda and 
a couple of other guys as well who are phenomenal so i don't know i don't know but what i'm seeing from john Jewett right here is really freaking impressive i don't know where he's gonna place like uh, i don't know how good will he compare against the other guys uh, in all the poses but like from what i'm seeing right here especially most muscular and like front double with those crazy freaking biceps of his and like the side poses and the conditioning in the glutes and hamstrings and that crazy massive back like look at the freaking size of the lats he's a freak he, he is a freak for sure and you know if things align for him well he might be one of the top 10 guys i do not have him in my top 10 but it's not out of the question Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best. And bye-bye.